Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today where we're going to be talking about how Pandora, the, the jewelry company Pandora, that is, is using Tin Can to correlate training with actual employee performance data. Uh, this is a really interesting case study. One of the, the early Tin Can adopters doing some, some super interesting stuff. I'm Mike Rostasi. I'm the host for today. I'm going to soon be turning it over to uh, Skip Marshall and Per Ferdinandson to tell you a lot more about what's going on over here. Real quick, a few logistics though. If you have any questions, feel free to put them into the question window over there. At the end, we will uh, take a few minutes to address a, a few of them that we can get to, but as we do with all of our webinars, we will answer all of them after the webinar in, in written form and email that out to all of the attendees and registrants for today's webinar. So feel free to put that in there. If you want to join in on the conversation on Twitter as the webinar is going along, hashtag ThinkCanAPI, we'll get you to the right people. And a few of us will probably stick on the webinar afterwards to continue to discuss as well. So the, the lovely smiling faces in front of you, Mike Rustacy, that's me. I'm the founder of Rustacy Software. Uh, I think most of you know who we are if you're on our webinar over here, but we're kind of the um, chief geeks behind a lot of the, the tin can stuff. Uh, joining me is Skip Marshall of Tribridge. Tribridge is a, <coughs> excuse me, a, a largely an integrator and a thought leader in this space and a learning space does a lot of work tying systems into the cornerstone ecosystems. They've been a great partner of ours over the year. And Per Ferdinandsen from Pandora joining us all the way from Denmark. He is not a native English speaker, but you will not know it based on how, what you'll hear on this conversation. He would have fooled me. Uh, and I'm looking forward to, to hearing what they have to say. So I'm going to start off real quick with just kind of a quick introduction to uh, the Tin Can API and the tool that they're using to put a lot of this stuff together that you're going to hear about, which is the Watershed Learning Record Store, one of our new products that allows you to fully realize the potential of Tin Can you know, right now and to get started doing some of these cool things and to make a lot of sense of the data that you're starting to collect. This is not going to be a, a Tin Can 101 webinar. There's plenty of those out there. Uh, if you're not familiar with you know, what that is, you might want to take a, take a moment and pause and go beef up on that before you dive too much into all this. Another quick point, this webinar will be recorded and available later on if you uh, have to drop off and want to catch the rest of it or just want to send it on out, we'll be sending out a link to that afterwards as well. So, you know, really quick, what are people doing with Tin Canada and Watershed that are kind of interesting? We're going to dive into one use case here, but what are some of the other things that people are doing just to kind of generate some awareness of what's going on there out in the ecosystem there? When we're encouraging people to do this adoption, we're using something called the watershed method, which is something we, um, it's a process we've introduced for helping organizations introduce Tin Can into their organization. And, and what we're doing here is trying to create a very careful study and a deliberately scoped project, a deliberately scoped hypothesis that allows us to go introduce Tin Can, but also to introduce a scientific method, a very stringent analysis as we are doing that so that we can use all of the new data that we are collecting to learn something about the organization. And what, what, what Pear and Skip have done with the, this project that we're going to tell you a, a little bit about here is, you know, it's a great example of trying, having a question they want to know and then gathering new sets of data to answer that question. So, you know, other things real quick that people are doing with, with Watershed and Tin Can starts with just you know, doing the simple participation and completion data, it, gathering that from many more places, using that to feed into badging or as we like to call it accomplishments or, or milestones, tracking the achievement, learning achievements from many, many different sources of activity. Observing things that are happening in the real world, performance observation is a big thing that a lot of organizations are excited to be working with right now. Lots of organizations using Tin Can and, and learning record stores to consolidate data from many different systems within an organization, be that many different LMS systems or just many different sources of training and learning activity. Lots of people doing things, analyzing competencies and comparing different individuals or different teams, different divisions on their various strengths and weaknesses. 
big exciting one is kind of population comparison. Let's train this population this way and this population this way, and then let's go compare the results to see who is then performing better. So we then start to learn about the effectiveness of our training applications. Some really interesting case studies out there around learning path analysis, looking at the different ways people choose to learn or the most common routes through simulations and things like that. People doing cool things, looking at the impact of training and how long those impacts will last for. What are those impacts and how diverse are they? Uh, it's a really fun thing that's just so simple, taking a deeper dive into assessment data. We can you know, take a much more granular look at our assessments and you know, TinCan allows us to be very open about that data and get at all of that data to, you know, to pull in some, some really cool reports over there. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Skip, who's going to just kind of give you a really quick introduction to TriBridge and where they're, how they're fitting into this project before we then turn it over to Pear to tell us about Pandora and what they've got going on today. So here you go, Skip. Excellent. Thanks, Mike. So as Mike mentioned, uh, TriBridge Human Capital is a really a, a solution and services integrator with a focus in, in talent and human capital management. Uh, we have three core areas. Uh, that really allow us to um, provide a, a broad context for our clients and really a holistic solution focusing in uh, services, content, and technical integrations. <clears throat> Oops, there we go. Um, so Trivers has been doing this a while. Um, we uh, have a little over two and a half million clients that are, we're working with our two and, and users, excuse me. Um, and we do about 700 engagements with our clients uh, each year. Uh, we've been focusing this industry a little over 13 years now in, in a very rapid growth organization. Now, we focus with our clients on a number of things, but one of the topics that's been coming up quite frequently as of late is really how do we get them to kind of really expand their reach and look at you know, leverage the new technologies that are out there and the new solutions to expand their access and the things that they're able to deliver to their, to their organizations and the uh, people within those organizations. Um, as many of you are aware, with, with the, the Tin Can API, it allows uh, learning organizations to really extend that reach um, and really broaden where they're going and what they're able to do. Now, um, Tin Can itself, you know, allowed for, excuse me, SCORM itself allowed for really, um, you know, giving those interactions and those learning activities within a traditional LMS, but that didn't stop there. And most of us know that learning is really far more than what takes place in a system. There's lots of different activities, um, different interactions, and whether it's a, um, you know, an interaction we have with a coworker or involved at a website or uh, watching different videos. There's lots of other activities that take place in your, your kind of daily learning activities. And Tin Can really allows that kind of expansion and it gives you the reach to, to go further and do more. Um, so we started working with our clients really to, you know, take advantage of those technologies um, and get, you know, further and further into the system and, and beyond the system to where they are. As an example, um, the ability to actually provide that content and those learning opportunities um, where those individuals exist. So, you know, as an example, being able to take your content offline, um, for example, if you are in the hospitality industry and you have workers in a kitchen or a cafe or working in a hotel, um, they don't always have access to the technology and systems. They don't have a computer in front of them most of the time. So getting them access to a tablet um, or a phone you know, working off their phones, they a big benefit to them, and they're able to, to do more in real time and have uh, uh, less time that they have to take off of their um, regular activities. Um, additionally, as an example, if you're um, in healthcare, being able to get that on-the-job uh, knowledge and benefit, performance support, whatever it may be, is very valuable. Um, so if you're a nurse or a therapist, you're able to access that information, you know, before and after uh, patient activities or even often directly with the patients and providing them learning experiences. And most importantly, that information then is able to be tracked now, which was a big hurdle, being able to collect that information and bring it back in. So we're working with our clients really to make those connections, connecting it to the a watershed learning record store, for example, and then bringing that data into the, the corporate LMS 
uh, becomes a very significant value. Um, and that, that extends into what we're doing with uh, Pandora. Um, and now I'd like to introduce, introduce Pear and have Pear talk about uh, what he's doing to extend and really look at the overall impact uh, that his learning organization is having on uh, his company. Pear? Thank you, Skip. Um, and, uh, and thank you, Mike, also for the kind words. Um, yeah, and I hope I can uh, live up to those expectations on language. I uh, sure will do what I can. Um, yeah, just a, a few quick words on Pandora. Um, now that we've at least established that we're not the online radio service, um, I think uh, a lot of uh, the women that are connected here today and probably a lot of the, the men uh, as well know about uh, Pandora as a jewelry brand. Uh, but what you might not know is that it's a Danish company. Um, and then we have a, a worldwide uh, presence. Um, we sell jewelry in, in, in more than 80 countries around the world. Um, and from a training perspective, that gives us a lot of uh, challenges uh, daily. Um, as this slide says, uh, we have uh, around 15,000 retail staff, but um, we also have between 10 and 20,000 wholesale staff that we also try to uh, to reach out to uh, as a service to uh, to make sure that we get uh, as maxim uh, maximized the sales output as possible. Uh, and we currently deliver uh, a lot of online training in 19 different languages. Um, we produce a lot of uh, classroom training materials for the trainers that we have in our markets uh, in the various countries. And uh, our typical Learner is uh, is the young female uh, sales staff in the store, uh, typically aged 18 to 24, um, and that's that's the person that we uh, that we try to uh, that's essentially the the person that uh, that can deliver the success for the company. Even though we can do a lot of great marketing, we can do a lot of uh, fantastic products, but if uh, the customer has a bad experience in the store, then the sale doesn't happen and everything is in, in vain. Uh, so that's why uh, we uh, as a company and, and the management in, in the company know that uh, training is, uh, is very important. We use uh, Cornerstone Demand as our learning management system um, and I'll try to, uh, to get a little bit uh, around uh, how we uh, do some of our things and, uh, and some of the interesting stuff that we are working with uh, Rusty C. Um, and the watershed LRS and uh, Tribridge um, to uh, to maximize uh, the training and the, the output that we get. And one thing that that also makes uh, one thing I should remember to say that makes uh, our challenge uh, big in uh, in Pandora is that we have a very diverse uh, ownership structure. Um, uh, I mentioned wholesale staff, uh, so that probably, uh, for those of you who are within retail, uh, rings a bell. Um, but yeah, it, it basically means that uh, we have stores that we own, concept stores. Uh, you might have seen some of them. We also have stores, uh, concept stores that are owned by franchises. Um, we sell our jewelry on cruise ships or in airlines. Um, we sell them in mom and, mom and pop stores. Uh, so we have a lot of different uh, sales channels, a lot of different points of sale, um, and so that's uh, that's of course a challenge from a from a learning perspective because uh, it means that we can't just uh, uh, make everything mandatory and decide that uh, everybody has to do uh, everything. Um, next slide, please. So the the big question that we had when we started working out with this project um, was, uh, as, uh, as Mike also said earlier, we were trying to uh, use a scientific method to approach as uh, sort of like a narrow uh, hypothesis to, to see that, that this is actually a concept that works. And, and ours was to see if there is a correlation between uh, the training attendance or the training activities that we have uh, and the product sales uh, that we see in store. So really in practice, can we see a direct correlation between uh, the stores where we focus and where they have access to all our training uh, offerings 
um, compared to stores or other points of sale that don't have the same uh, access uh, to the same uh, broad um, offerings. And that was really uh, that was really the, the hypothesis that we that we first wanted to to try and, and and answer through this project. And if you go to the next slide, please. And so we um, in Pandora this year, uh, there's been a, a strategic decision in in management that um, we are uh, we have we have been since uh, Pandora started not so many years ago. Uh, we've traditionally been a uh, charms and bracelet company, um, and that's where all the success, uh, the massive growth that uh, Pandora has seen uh, in the last 10 years, uh, that's where all of that came from. But um, obviously, you'd like to, as a company, you'd like to make sure that you don't rely too much on one aspect of, of, your, um, of your business, but that you'd actually be able to spread out some of your success. Um, so in bad times for bracelet and charms, you could actually have another uh, one of your product lines that uh, bring in a lot of income. And so uh, this year has been decided to be uh, to be year of the ring and to focus a lot on on this particular product. Um, and um, uh, and that that's actually uh, uh, something that we've all, we've also then. Uh, been uh, engaged with in our uh, in the training department that I'm uh, a part of uh, to make sure that we have training offerings uh, that are updated and that are uh, that are supporting this drive of the business. And um, for this particular uh, uh, watershed LRS project, um, we then set out to to uh, to include this particular initiative um, and make sure that. Um, or to make it a part of that and uh, and to see if we could uh, use it to support uh, analytics on all types of learning activities that we have even uh, outside of the learning management system um, and to see if we could bring data from our sales uh, from the individual uh, store members the performance that they have in store when they sell products uh, in the same view or in the same page as you have the learning activity data and then see if we can can make a correlation um, between learning activity, training activity, and actual sales performance. Next slide, please. So, um, if we look at our um, our uh, uh, before tin can uh, before watershed LRS. Uh, Status or the, the 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 way everything worked before we set out on this project. Uh, as I told you earlier, we were using and we still are using Cornerstone uh, on demand as our learning management system. Um, and so the content is uh, traditional uh, in uh, that we uploaded as SCORM packages, and we can see the very standard uh, uh, statuses: uh, is it completed? Have they started it? Uh, are they only registered? Those kind of transcript status um, information uh, are available, um, but we can't really see what part of, of uh, the content that was actually engaging them. Um, so, what part of the e-learning modules, for instance, was engaging uh, our users? Uh, what part of the e-learning modules are not engaging them? Uh, we typically use, uh, uh, like I'm sure a lot of you do, images, text, uh, a number of uh, various quiz questions and so on to keep them engaged. We use uh, videos as well, um, but we don't really get any data on the engagement value of any of those uh, learning uh, activities. We can't really see uh, how much uh, of the video they actually uh, saw. We can't really see if they skipped it, when did they skip it. Uh, we can't really uh, see if there are certain uh, aspects in the course that are not mandatory. Did they actually explore them? I mean, there's a lot of uh, these uh, activities that we'd like to get more data on, uh, not only to see if they have uh, value, but also to see if we can improve them. Because, um, I mean, that's really, uh, that's really something you'd like to do as a, as a training professional, of course. Like you do when you're in a classroom, you can uh, instantly see or feel if something doesn't work. Uh, but that's really difficult with e-learning uh, when you're not uh, in the same room as the as the participants. Next slide, please. 
And this slide I really like. Uh, this I'm sure a lot of you can maybe recognize, uh, probably not the data in it, but the typical outcome of uh, learning management systems. So you get uh, rows and rows of uh, of uh, data with uh, employees, names, uh, divisions. Uh, uh, in our case, it's stores, um, their uh, position, and so on. And then we can see the learning object, and we can see the status of the learning object, whether it was completed by the employee not, or not. Um, and then we can export that out to Excel, and we can do some Excel uh, maneuvers or Excel exercises to use macros and pivot tables and we spend a lot of time doing this to bring data to uh, to the actual decision makers and to those that should actually drive a lot of uh, um, a lot of the motivation or a lot of the incentive behind uh, getting the training done uh, in the stores um, so it's this was actually also uh, quite a challenge for us to uh, to bring data to to the right people with our learning management system um, and this is also something that we would like to uh, to uh, to get more possibilities with. Next slide, please. Um, but thinking beyond the the traditional uh, learning management system, um, the learning management system is great for for facilitating or uh, registering all the the formal. Uh, uh, training or learning activities such as uh, e-learning or your uh, your classic uh, classroom uh, training, uh, instructor-led training. But what about all those uh, informal training activities? Uh, you know they happen. Uh, you don't know how much they happen. You don't know how often they happen. You don't know uh, who uh, actually does these type of activities. Uh, but you know that that some do, um, and and for our uh, case, we have a, a number of uh, customer-oriented um, apps, for instance, or websites where we try to show the um, the brand and different stylings and how it associates with various uh, fashion trends. Um, and these uh, these informations and and these uh, these uh, looks and and uh, and stylings are really good for a sales associate to to know about, of course, because when the customer comes in and if they are then able to match the right products to that type of style, well then the, that customer could get a really good experience. And again, for us, that would be great to see who actually uh, uses these informations to uh, to get better at their sales performance. And uh, if we could bring that data up uh, to decision makers, I'm sure we could drive more people in there. And um, and maybe that could even be incentivized in some way. So that's something also that uh, that we would like um, on the onset of this project that we would like, uh, or it's one of the motivations behind us being engaged in this type of project, is to be able to capture all that data um, and and bring it into to one system that can show us uh, these interesting activities that's going on. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, so uh, that's our e-learning portal uh, in, in Cornerstone On Demand. Um, and of course we still do uh, e-learning. It's not, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you know, um, it's not, Tin Can is not a technology, Watershed is not a, a product that's going to replace uh, your learning management system or replace uh, e-learning as a concept. but. Uh, it could improve uh, the way that you use your e-learning uh, because you will know more about how it's being used. Um, and that's uh, definitely our motivation, one of them behind uh, us getting into this project. Uh, the fact that we can that we can uh, get more information about the, the usage and the engagement within the e-learning modules. So we can see uh, we can set up parameters that can uh, that can analyze which pages uh, we're, we're driving more engagement. Uh, we can also uh, set up parameters that will check engagement with various media. Uh, so, I mean, those those things were were not possible for us before. We tried uh, a couple of experiments with Google Analytics. Uh, didn't really give us. It gave us some data, but it didn't really give us any data on user level. Um, 
and so it, it wasn't really uh, good enough for us. So that's where we we see a, a lot of strength in, in Watershed LRS. Next slide, please. So what I've talked to you about so far um, has mainly been uh, the um, technical or the the, uh, the online resources, uh, learning objects. Um, but we actually still use um, paper um, printed materials. Uh, Pandora having over 10,000 points of sale, um, possibly 35,000 people in any day selling products uh, with Pandora branded on. Um, even though uh, it's a very connected world and, and everybody has, well, that's what we'd like to say, everybody has a computer and so on, we still see um, a lot of value in having a printed material. Um, and I'll, and I'll talk a little bit more about it uh, a, a couple of slides from now, but um, what, we, what we see uh, some value in, what the company has seen some value in so far, is to produce what we call a training workbook or a product workbook, um, which is um, a book that describes uh, the specific collection, the specific product line, um, describes the materials, the craftsmanship, um, how it connects with the fashion trends and, and so on, and really gives a lot of selling points. Um, it's a, and it also has a couple of assignments, written assignments in it. Um, not that difficult, but it tries to to tie into uh, to the to the information in it uh, and try to uh, to leverage or to uh, increase some of the learning value from it. Um, and we we're producing this in our head office in Copenhagen. We're sending it out, not printed, but we're sending it out as a um, an Adobe document uh, that the markets can then uh, translate if they want to, print if they want to. Um, we also offer service for some of the markets to, to print through us, but the thing is we don't really know what happens with it. Um, we've seen them used in some of the stores that we are not that far away from geographically, but we have no way of knowing how it's actually being used in the market uh, and how much is being used. And that's where TinCan is uh, a really great technology and where uh, a product like the Watershed LRS, the learning record store, really shows a lot of versatility and value for, uh, for a, learning, um, um, a learning department. Because this enables us uh, to set up a workflow to make some uh, um, properties or set up that will actually enable us uh, to check or to analyze uh, the number of people who actually use this workbook, who had it in their hands. Um, we can even uh, tie in some sort of um, learning activity that they then have to respond to and then TinCan can collect that. So that's, that's really, really interesting for us because all of a sudden uh, this printed material that's really difficult to, to analyze the outcome of um, becomes something that we can collect uh, data on and analyze on um, so and do that from a holistic perspective so together with all the other data that we have on our learning activities um, yes next slide please so another thing that we've uh, launched this year um, and that we're gonna uh, tie in with uh, with the watershed LRS um, is a social learning platform. Um, we're using it as, as it is provided by Cornerstone on demand. Um, we don't see a lot of uh, analytic um, options with the LMS, the LMS that's providing this social feature, at least not out of the box. Um, and so we saw some um, basic need to to tie in um, some data that we could track uh, that we could get out of the social learning social learning platform and put that together with other learning activity data. Uh, specifically, we would like to uh, to see if uh, people who are very active on uh, the, the social learning platform, um, people who participate and engage with it if they actually uh, might also be the high performers on the sales floor 
um, to see if there's any correlations there. Um, does increased learner interaction on the social learning platform also mean increased sales? Uh, that would be an interesting thing to know about, because uh, then we would need to um, to uh, to encourage them more, um, and that would be uh, really valuable knowledge for us to know. So that's something again that Watership or LRS um, that we see a lot of value in that product that we can actually get that uh, possibility and and be able to set parameters for what we want to track in our social learning platform uh, and set that out and do it. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, Tin Can as a technology, um, that, you know, it, it, it brings in a, a lot of new stuff, but I think one of the, the, the things that I like most about it um, and about a product like uh, the Watershed Learning Record Store is the fact that we can tie in all the traditional learning data that we have with all these new data sources. Um, and so in instructor-led training, yeah, we already have the, um, the data on who participated. Um, why not bring that in there as well? Um, again, no need to have several systems to pull uh, all that information from. Um, make, makes it muddy, much easier to have it all uh, in one place. And then it also enables us to do uh, the correlations, or at least to, do, to analyze and look for the correlations. So that's something uh, that we're bringing in there as well. And then the next thing, uh, next slide please, uh, is something that we really are, lo are very interested in seeing the results on. Um, piece of background information on Pandora. Uh, the way that we're organized typically uh, is that a store has a number of sales staff and typically uh, a store manager and maybe an assistant store manager or several assistant store managers depending on the size. Um, those store managers, um, it, and it varies a lot from market to market and country to country depending on culture, depending on who owns the store and whether it's a franchise or wholesale or whether it's owned and operated. But store managers will typically do some sort of, of sales coaching with their staff. It's, um, I suppose you could call it both uh, or maybe either or formal and informal training. So um, because it's facilitated by their manager, you, you know, and, and the, 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 the store staff is gathered maybe once a week uh, and they do some sort of, of uh, training focused on on maybe on KPIs or on how to approach customers or whatever, um, that data we don't capture anywhere. So we have no idea. We can see, I've visited several stores in different countries and it's very, very clear when you go into a store that works well and that has high sales figures, um, you instantly feel that there is a difference between the other stores that don't have that. Um, and also we have uh, the store managers manager, the, the, the regional sales managers. They regularly visit the stores um, and they also do in-store trainings. Uh, they do in-store coaching of the staff, of individual store members. Um, and some stores they visit more often than others. Uh, some uh, regional sales managers visit uh, each store um, within the same uh, uh, or equally as much as other stores and other uh, regional sales managers uh, focus on stores that don't perform well. Um, so we'd like to see actually what's the most efficient uh, um, sales manager, how are they doing this? So if, if we could get data on, uh, on these visits, if we could get data on these uh, coachings, if we could collect that data uh, and try to correlate that with the performance in store. That would be really interesting from a, both from an operational perspective, um, but also from a learning perspective to see if these informal, uh, non-centrally facilitated activities actually have any performance value in the store. And that's where uh, Tin Can as a technology and the, the learning record store um, can help us and, and is helping us in this, in this particular project. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I've been, I've introduced you to um, to the things that we're looking at um, with this particular 
um, project trying to answer that hypothesis of whether there is a correlation between training attendance and, and activities and the sales performance in store or not. Um, but I think, and, and, and Pandora sees uh, a lot of more opportunity with, with this particular technology. Uh, we're currently looking into our uh, onboarding uh, uh, approach. Um, we have a classic uh, e-learning module that's called Welcome to Pandora. Um, the classic uh, uh, approach, as some of our markets also have uh, or combine that with, uh, with uh, uh, a, a, a classroom training, um, which doesn't happen the first day, of course, but they have those uh, rolling once a month or once every other month to, uh, to include new staff. Um, but we see, uh, we w and we would like to, to, uh, to make that, take that to the next level and to try maybe to tie some of these new technologies and these new opportunities into uh, a more holistic onboarding uh, process or approach uh, where, for instance, social learning is part of it, uh, where you may uh, be, uh, be put into contact and, uh, and given assignments that you need to solve with, with, uh, with other new staff members from other stores, maybe from other uh, Pandora markets. Um, and maybe uh, this onboarding module will also uh, contain uh, a personal profile for you, a learning profile that will continuously update as we collect all that training data on you. Um, so both your, uh, all of the things that we've been through that I've told you about so far, all of that could be gathered into a personal profile and, and show uh, this uh, progress uh, quite visibly to uh, to the learner. We see that as, as something that's really exciting to work with. Next slide, please. And I think the word that a lot of you, uh, or some of you might think about is gamification. And of course, that's something that that I think is is, um, is really exciting uh, to, to, to bring into uh, to learning and learning management. The uh, the option to, to really be able to, uh, uh, to show visu visually um, the the progress of the learner, uh, not just on on course level, but on a much more holistic level, uh, to to show them that uh, that these are the uh, the achievements that you've had, these are the successes that you've had, these are the experiences that you've been through, because um, uh, the, the the technology does not only allow us to. As you can see, to uh, to collect all the the attendee status, or all the transcript completion data, it, it allows us to to collect data on a much more broad level. Um, so why not collect data on on the successes or the challenges that uh, this staff member has been through? Uh, why not uh, why not do that? Uh, that that could be very valuable information for for the company, I think, because even if you are uh, not performing well in the store. Uh, and your sales figures don't look fantastic. There might be a reason for it that's not you, but maybe it's part of the store, maybe it's part of, of something else. Um, and those things are hard to see if we don't have the full picture. And I think that's something that, that Tin can, can uh, as a technology, can, can leverage. Um, and I think, next slide, please. I think that, that uh, one thing that, that really, um, I remember I had this conversation with uh, with another uh, uh, learning enthusiast, a uh, really brilliant guy, um, who mentioned this concept of of the learning backpack. And I think that's really great, uh, really great uh, way of putting it. The the fact that I could uh, have all the the learnings and experiences that I've had in a sort of a techno technological backpack. Um, something that I can maybe display on my LinkedIn profile, something that I uh, can continuously improve and build on because I continuously get new on-the-job experiences, uh, things that are recorded, uh, data that are put into my backpack from my current employer. Uh, so if I'm an employee in a, in a Pandora store and I'm part of this really successful uh, Christmas sales campaign, well, that is something that's valuable to for me to uh, to be able to to say to my next employer 
And it's also valuable for Pandora to know that this person was actually part of that campaign, and maybe a particularly difficult store to, uh, to achieve success in. So we can see that this, this person is not just uh, performing well, but is maybe overperforming. Um, and why not, uh, when we get that value from collecting all the data, why not then bring that data to the user or the, the employee and let them take it to the next employer uh, in some shape or form so that they can actually uh, continue to grow um, and can actually keep on uh, collecting and, and, and uh, yeah, uh, keep on collecting the, the data about the training uh, achievements and, and the uh, uh, on-the-job achievements um, and be able to more precisely show how brilliant they are for, uh, for the next employer. I think that would be a great thing as a company to be able to give to your employees, even though you know that that uh, the stalls have a high turnover and they're not going to stay, uh, uh, stay for long. Um, and it will also be something that might attract uh, uh, new talent. So I think that's something that a lot of companies could uh, could benefit from. Um, and I think that was, uh, yeah, that was the learning backpack. So um, looking on on what we can uh, can get from and what we are hoping to uh, to to get from uh, from the project with uh, the watershed LRS. Uh, we are really hoping to see how we can uh, how we can measure uh, the specific uh, training activities that were part of a specific sales campaign and see how that correlates with the sales performance. Um, we're bringing uh, the sales data uh, from our point of sale into the learning record store. We are bringing all these activity data in there as well, and 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 we're really really excited about seeing the outcome and seeing uh, how those dates are correlated. Next slide, please. And then hopefully also we'll be able to see uh, how uh, our users are engaged with our learning activities. And um, I mean, I, I really hope that, uh, and, I, and I feel that there's a basis for hoping this, that, uh, that this type of, uh, of technology can, can give us a tool to uh, more precisely evaluate our own uh, performance as a learning or uh, L&D or training department um, so that we can see what, uh, what learning activities do we need to improve on, um, which learning activities do we need to retire, um, where do we need to introduce new learning activities or where do we need to change uh, to keep up or to improve engagement. Because uh, I think that's something that's uh, increasingly difficult with with uh, the, the learning management systems and, and e-learning in general, uh, really, really hard to get any valid data on. Um, but here, because we are able to bring in more data, I think that's that's something that uh, that has uh, the potential to bring great value to uh, to us as a company. So I think I'm gonna sit down and uh, get a little uh, water, uh, and then I'll turn it over to uh, to Skip to uh, talk a little bit about how all this actually. Uh, uh, works from a technical perspective. Great, thanks, Pear. So, as as you can imagine, you heard from Pear, there are a lot of variables and elements that are going on uh, within Pandora's project. There's lots of different systems at play. Um, you heard how everything from their their standard corporate users that may be coming in through an LMS, um, their those that may be in a storefront, franchisees, those that may have small consumer shops. There's lots of different. Uh, end users that are involved in different systems and technologies, but uh, being able to aggregate the data, whether it's being involved in um, kind of the traditional learning management activities, looking at the, the social learning elements, um, all of that information um, can be fed back and organized. And one of the elements we haven't really talked about, it, it kind of acts as a little bit of a connective tissue here, is uh, the Triverge Ampli Amplify HR solution, which really um, allows the different systems to talk um, and starts pulling those activities together and the, those different events um, and then tied into the watershed LRS. So all of those things work as a, a common ecosystem um, and exchange data back and forth and that's, that's really key to making this successful is, is get everything to be seamless um, and happen behind the system, behind the scenes so that you're not having to fiddle with the technology and really um, 
kind of manually process or import things, which we've all been used to, you know, grabbing the you know, CSV flat file and having to import it into your system. Um, but the automation and the seamless integration becomes critical. And then the, the other main component of this um, that really brings it all together is really the, the model, um, the watershed method that, that Ross brings to bear. And I'm going to turn it back over to Mike to have him talk a moment about that and to wrap it up. Mike? Yeah, well, well thanks, Skip, and thanks, Pear, for sharing all of your experiences with us. And you know, as, as Skip was saying, the, this all started with the question, with the hypothesis. You know, are we doing the right things in our training programs to affect sales within the store? And um, you know, that, that's what the Bordership Method is all about, is trying to isolate that question and then to gather all of the different data sources, which you see through Pear's presentation, were quite a few, and you know, bring them into one place where we can start to, to draw those conclusions. And you know, the, this uh, data collection is just now starting to get underway. A lot of these pieces are in place. We're all really looking forward to fast forwarding a few months down the road and seeing what the answers to those hypotheses are and you know, seeing if we can improve the training program and you know, just continue to, to drive further sales within Pandora and then looking for better ways to continue to take on some of those future possibilities that Pear was mentioning. And so I, I like to kind of wrap up each of these webinars with you know, a few of my key takeaways as I listen to these stories and think about you know, what these use cases mean in, in the bigger picture and the, the things that I think are important about this. And with, with this one, you know, I start with a little bit of an adoption milestone. You know, for when we're looking at tin can as a whole, you know, three years ago this was you know, the idea of a kind of a few geeks in an office outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And now you know, there's two things about this. One, we're looking at international adoption. And some of our prior webinars, I think the last one was the UK National Health Service. Now we're looking in, in Denmark, and Pandora is obviously an international company. This thing, you know, it's going worldwide. It's not just going to be a United States thing. And, and the other big adoption milestone that I see here is you know the stepping in of major integrators and learning exports or learning experts like Tribridge. You know that these are the people who have broad audiences, broad expertise, and who make a lot of the significant recommendations about leading edge practices to actual organizations out there and implementing these things. And, and Tribridge is going all in on this stuff and we're excited to, to see that happening and I think that's you know a lot of momentum that comes from that. Next big key takeaway for me is you know, this is what a real training program looks like. We're looking at learning happening everywhere. You know, Pear started off talking about how they deliver e-learning stuff, but that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. You have the social systems, the manager, the real-world manager interactions, the instructor-led training, all the way down to you know the paper, the workbook. This is real. This is how we really train people and how real people really learn. It's not just all about delivering a page-turning e-learning course. And yeah, you know, and now we're starting to see Pandora organizations like Pandora start to capture all of this and, and bring it all in together. And that that's a really significant thing. It's a major change to our industry and how we're able to, to look at things. Yeah, next key takeaway is just reinforcing Pear sees all these great possibilities for ways and great things to do in the future, but you know, they settled in on a focused start. They focused on one question, started answering, collecting one set of data and bringing things all in together. Uh, metrics beyond tracking completion in Excel. It goes so much more, so much farther than just tracking completion data and putting out CSV files. And in fact, you know, we're really starting to get into that you know, Kirkpatrick level four level analysis and by tying in the learning to actual sales, actual business performance and business metrics that matter. It's just crossing the training department and you know, turning into a, a core strategic thing for a business. And, and furthermore, we're able to, as Pear mentioned, they've got this very complicated organizational structure and training population, whether it's retail versus wholesale stores or franchisees and international boundaries. You know, the, previously, it was kind of pretty hard to bring all of that stuff together. Tin Can's enabling them to cross those organizational boundaries and to bring data together much more effectively. And you know the other key point here that leads to a lot of confusion that I want to drive home is you know in here they're, they're working alongside the 
LMS. We're not looking to, you know, they're not displacing the LMS. The LMS serves an important role, but they're able to do all of this extra data collection that the LMS doesn't currently support, bring it all together, make meaning out of it, and, and integrate the important stuff into the LMS where possible. And, you know, just a curiosity from my perspective, the, the next hypothesis that I want to test is whether amongst male married attendees and panelists on their webinar if seeing that Pandora is coming out with rings is affecting holiday shopping behavior because I'm pretty sure it's doing that for at least one panelist over here uh, today. So with that we're going to take a few minutes and we wrapped up a little bit early here so we're going to take a few minutes and answer some questions. Uh, there's probably a poll going up on your screen any minute now if you are interested in taking a deeper dive into this um, this use case, uh, talking about Pandora, or you want to talk with some folks who are experts in this technology about how it can apply to your organization, what Tin Can can do for you, sit down one-on-one -on -one and, and dive into that really as a consultative uh, type of thing, not as a hard sales pitch or anything along those lines. We've got folks who are happy to do that, Tribridge has folks that are happy to do that, and so just go ahead and indicate that in the poll and we'll have somebody reach out to you later on. Uh, TriBridge and Rusty Software will both be at DevLearn next week as well. If you happen to be out and about, feel free to stop by. We will have a booth, and I think uh, Skip and a couple others will just be wandering around, and we know how to track them down. So please come out and say hi or come to any other of our events. And so uh, it's looking like we've got a few questions coming up, and I will scroll through these and see which ones we want to address over here. Let's see. So this is one that, oh, hold on, scrolling. Well, one that uh, I think Skip's going to address. Wondering if Pandora or other collects any instructor-led training interactions in Watershed. Think audience response system phone interaction data going to the LRS. And Skip, do you want to take that one? Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's a common question. You know, how, you know, all of these you know, we're talking about tracking all these non-traditional or other classroom-based, paper-based, whatever it may be, activities. Um, you know, how are we aggregating that information? And it, it could be everything from, um, you know, basic scanning technologies. For example, we have clients that actually leverage their badges to keep track of who's attending different events, um, all the way down to very deep um, technologies where you're actually using a phone-based app for respondent analysis, so they can actually directly respond um, within a class. So they may be in an ILT event, but they're still able to pull out their smartphones and, and uh, kind of respond to questions on demand. Um, so there's a variety of different ways they can do that. And again, it goes back to uh, getting all the systems to talk appropriately and, and aggregating that data. And, sk and maybe Skipper Perry could uh, be the, a similar answer, but there's questions in here about how do we track their regional sales manager visits and what people are completing on paper? So I think Pair can talk about the, the regional visits, but you know, the completing the items on paper, um, you know, everything from from old school Scantron based type activities, which still does happen, uh, surprisingly to me a little bit, but uh, we do have have a lot of clients that still leverage that type of technology to um, you know OCR optical character technologies and other things to start aggregating and collecting that information. So one of the nice things. Um, about this type of solution is it really allows for a very tailored approach to um, specific client requirements. So here's one for Pear. Has Tin Can integration changed the way you view your LMS? Um, before I answer that, I just want to uh, finish that uh, or just oh, sure, answer sure. the one about the regional sales manager visits. Um, so the, the the regional sales managers already register when they visit, but they do that in another system, in our CRM system. So it's really about getting those systems talking together. Um, that's that's where we get the data from. And then the other s question was, Mike, can you repeat that again? How has Tin Can integration changed the way you view your LMS? Right. Yeah. So I think before um, before this project, we were um, we 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 saw ourselves as as a bit limited with our LMS. Um, and my personal opinion about the LMS, not the vendor, but just the 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 concept of the LMS, was that it was uh, a technology that lacked behind um, a lot compared to other uh, online technologies. I think so. I think. Uh, 
tin can as a technology uh, and as a development, as a technological development, has, has is going to change uh, the the learning environment for a lot of companies uh, in the near future. Right. A uh, question for me. Are you going to keep the Tin Can API aligned with the X API or branch? Uh, right now they are exactly the same thing. We are in an unfortunate situation where we have an official name for something and a widely used nickname in the Tin Can API, but they are effectively the exact same thing. There are some you know, future possibility and highly technical geeky answers to that question that could elaborate uh, if you want to be a a fellow standards geek with me, I'm happy to dive into that later on. That's probably going to bore everybody on the call. So you know, feel free to follow up with that question over email if you would like some further details. Uh, what support does Watershed offer to produce the aggregated reporting out of the data in Watershed LRS? And so a big feature of Watershed is the reporting that is available in there. There are a series of you know, canned configurable reports, but you know, a lot of this is still very early stage. And so all of the engagements with Rusty Software and using the Watershed, Watershed LRS right now you know, include us going through that Watershed method with you and designing the data analysis you want to do and the visualizations you want to get and us then using the, the watershed tools to configure those for you. So currently we are providing both the kind of conceptual consulting basis for helping to figure out those reports. That's a big part of what TriBridge brings to the table in joint agreements or joint uh, projects as well. And then you know, currently we are doing a lot of the behind the scenes work to make those things show up on the screen for you, although they are becoming increasingly more user configurable as we continue to move along here. So that's uh, very similar to, does Watershed include the reporting APIs? Yes, there are APIs to get a lot of data out of Watershed. I think that's one of the core responsibilities of a learning record store is to make the data that it collects externally available. Um, those are currently in various states based on various you know, the different types of reports, but we'd be happy to walk you through those details uh, later on if you would like to. Let's see. Uh, here's a good question for pair or skip. It would seem that much of this approach depends on user involvement. What validations are used to verify user learning if it is self-defined? Good question. You're stumped. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Skip. Do you want to join in on that one? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it's it's. It really depends on one the, the specific activities, um, but really you really have to create the models that, that work in the, the given environment. So whether it's simply um, you know validating you know a user identity versus validating um, user knowledge and user application, you know they're all different questions. So I'm not sure or which direction that's going, but um, there are a number of different ways to be approached. Um, we actually had um, a client approach us about, uh, they use a little spooky, a little, uh, little uh, crazy, but they use NFC chips in their badge cards and, and track their employees or have the ability, I don't know whether they do it in detail, but the ability to track their employees even as they enter rooms. Um, so, you know, getting very very granular about how you're tracking your users and who they are and where they are, um, you know, opens up some interesting possibilities. Great. Well, well thanks, Skip and Pear. We are uh, running quickly out of time, and there's a bunch more questions coming through in the panel. So uh, as I indicated earlier, we will be sure to answer all those in writing and send them out to all of the registrants uh, in a couple days here, so you can look forward to that. Uh, we've got our next webinar scheduled, tinkanapi.com slash webinar for the details on that. Here we're going we're gonna to shift away from kind of the series we've been doing on adopter spotlights and use cases and, and do a, a session that talked about the impacts that TinCan is having on products within the e-learning industry, how it's changing LMSs and content providers and authoring tool, the emergence of the learning record store, and some of the trends we're seeing in the industry and some things that you know vendors need to be thinking about how they they will adopt to these shifts and those kind of things. So that should be a pretty thought-provoking one. Uh, it's based on a white paper that we shared with our, our customers about uh, a year or so, a little bit more than a year ago now to kind of help get them thinking. But it, it's time for the, everybody in the world to start thinking about 
you know, the big disruptions that you know, are ahead for TinCan and this uh, in the e-learning industry. So with that, we want to say thank you for coming. Really appreciate you coming out and listening to us for an hour now. And we look forward to seeing you at, at the next webinar. And feel free to reach out in between if you ever want to talk any more. Oh, quick thing. Uh, if you want to continue the conversation on Twitter, I think I've paired Skip and, and myself for a little while. We'll, we'll be monitoring Twitter on the, the TinCan API hashtag. I can keep that discussion going for a few more minutes. So thank you, everybody, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.